Uh, my name is Xiao Xiangzhu, 30 years old, originally from China, and now I'm working in the German Aerospace Center and the Technical University of Munich. In the project of uh, 4D CT, what we are trying to do is we try to use a radar satellite and uh, using, let's say, tens of the uh, radar satellite images taken from slightly different place over a time period, we try to uh, find the deep secrets in the uh, cities, which means the deformations in the millimeter scale. So for 4D City, the motivation for us to do in this uh, project is that more than half of the habitants in the Earth are living in the cities. And now we have optical sensors which can provide 3D information. However, um, the long-term monitoring of the city is still not possible. That's why we need to use uh, radar and uh, SAR interferometry as uh, uh, additional information. The whole uh, goal of the project is that we fuse the optical information and also the capability of uh, uh, SAR interferometry to also add a fourth dimension to the city models, which means the, the dynamic city models. Not only the position, but also the changes in a very small scale. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Xiaoshan. Thank you very much for the introduction and I will uh, show you today how radar satellite can see uh, the dynamic Earth. So we are working with radar. As you know, radar is kind of active sensor. It sends signals to, to the Earth's surface and then we are recording the reflected echoes. That's why radar has an advantage that is uh, independent from weather, sun illumination. That's why we're using this to sensing the Earth. And this is uh, uh, how our uh, sensors looks like. The German Terrasa X uh, satellite it has uh, two meters length. And what you see here is the um, antenna. And here is the solar panel. Um, what we're recording actually with this satellite uh, is two things. The first thing is the intensity, is what are the, the strength of the received echo reflected by the object on the Earth's surface. The other thing is the distance, as you know, radar measure distances. And uh, Terra's X is a very flexible sensor. Uh, um, it can provide images uh, from coarse resolution, wide coverage, and uh, very normal strip map data. And what's most exciting is this so-called uh, spotlight uh, mode which means uh, to increase the illumination time of the object, the satellite is staring to one spot, and so that we are, uh, we are getting a very high resolution. In this case, uh, we get a resolution of a uh, meter, which is very, uh, let's say, suitable for uh, urban uh, monitoring. So this is how it works, uh, staring at one point and uh, the sp spotlight mode. So now I show you some uh, images. This is a typical Google image you might expect, uh, and this is the Las Vegas downtown, and uh, this is the famous Casino Street, and uh, let's see how radar sees it. So this is a radar image of the same area. On the one hand, with the meter resolution, which is actually the highest uh, uh, resolution we are able to uh, now get with the civil uh, radar satellites, we will see a lot of details of the urban, and uh, for, for instance here, you see the urban um, facades, if, if you have patience, you can even count the floors. And uh, of course, we also see something, let's say, the, the geometry of this image is very strange. This is because radar is looking to the side. So everything is uh, somehow, uh, if, uh, let's say, the objects are sharing the same distance to the sensor, then they are mapping into one pixel. That's why you see all these high-rise buildings as if they are all falling down to the ground. And that's why with a single star image, we are not, uh, it's very difficult to interpret. And even though it has a very a strong power uh, in uh, doing this mapping, we need very sophisticated algorithms in order to retrieve the important information. So the trick we are doing is like the following. Instead of using one single image, the satellite will repeat every 11 days to the same place, taking an image from slightly different uh, position, then with tens of these images, we are getting the 3D shapes of the Earth's surface. And this is very similar to the concept of CT. So you do a 360 degree scan, and then you are doing 3D reconstruction of the human body. In this case, the scanner is the radar, and what we are scanning in the patient is the Earth. And uh, another exciting thing is, uh, since the data are acquired within a period of a year, within this time period, this object might change the positions, and this also gives us the opportunity to do the monitoring. 
So since today we are in Berlin, I definitely should show some examples of Berlin. So this is the radar image of Berlin. So with a single image, as you see, black and white, it's probably very difficult to interpret. And with this, uh, uh, let's say, tens of this data and with the algorithms I have uh, developed, this is what we are now achieving. So I show you a Berlin tour. What you see here is the Postdamer Platz. This is the Reichstag and this is the Berlin Railway Station. And uh, um, we are now uh, achieving uh, a density of one million points per kilometer square. And what you see here is a tier park, for instance, this is the statue in the center. And pay attention to these regular rasters. This is actually the lamp poles along the roads. So this is the, um, let's say the 3D information. What's more exciting is that actually we also get the time series, how this object is deforming and in the scale of millimeter. So you know, from winter to summer, the temperature will change. Uh, for instance, for the railways, they are building up kind of some uh, clearance between the sections, so that to allow some expansion. And this is what you are seeing here. On top is the optical image of Berlin, uh, and the lower part is the moving of the parts. So in summer, different railway sections moving to, uh, towards each other and then separate in winter. This kind of movement is actually in the uh, scale of millimeter, just remember the satellite is f flying several hundred kilometers away. Just to give you one example, uh, the distance between Munich and Berlin is around 600 uh, um, kilometers. We are seeing kind of deformation which is in the scale of this needle. Okay, so you can see um, we are like have millions of the GPS uh, of the cities. Then we can get uh, do a very well monitoring of the city. But this is just a showcase. Some of the nation use the deformation is not dangerous. But there are other occasions. For instance, this is the uh, convention center of Las Vegas. And here you see a golf field. And uh, because of the underwater extraction, it's undergoing kind of uh, subsidence. So if this kind of deformation would, uh, let's say, go beyond certain threshold, this could be dangerous, right? And uh, there are many other applications like uh, monitoring of important infrastructures like bridges, dams, uh, railways, um, let's say this kind of high voltage poles, and also for, let's say, electro hazards like uh, volcano areas or earthquake. So we are, um, what I'm now personally interested in is to bring this kind of technology, maybe to, you think it's very far away from our daily life, and bring them together with the social media data, the uh, images you are taking with your phone, and then uh, we are able to, um, let's say, get a, a better uh, information retrieval for, for, the, for different kind of uh, infrastructures or whatever. And uh, maybe one day, we even can use any kind of uh, software like Google. We go to any place on the Earth. We will see the 3D shapes of the buildings like we can see today. And uh, we, we will add you another information, which are the deformation of the buildings. For instance, the red ones are not stable, I should not buy. And the <laughs> yellow ones are better say in five years, and the green ones are OK to keep. Anyway, this is just one vision. There are many other ideas. Thank you very much.